Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. In this lesson, we're going to review Pythagorean theorem and how to calculate a distance in a coordinate system. So first, let's review about right triangle, per knowledge. In a right triangle, the legs form the right angle. So these two, the A and the B, so these two are the legs. And then the hypotenuse is always the side across from the right angle. So right angle across from it, this is called the hypotenuse. As for the Pythagorean theorem, the square of the length of the hypotenuse, so the square of the length of the hypotenuse, hypotenuse is always letter C, so when you square it, that C squared, is equal to the sum of the squares of the length of the legs. The length of the legs, we have A and B, but they need to be squared, so you have an AB square and a B square, sum of them, so add them together. So of course, the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. To find the missing side using Pythagorean theorem, when you know that a triangle is a right triangle, again, Pythagorean theorem only works for right triangle, you can use it to find the missing side. First thing we do is we label the size of the given triangle as A, B, and C. Doesn't matter which side you label as A and B, they're just legs. The important thing is you have to make sure you label C as the longest side. And then we're just gonna plug the two numbers given to you into the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared, equals c squared. So a whatever the number is, b whatever the number is, and c maybe that's the one you're solving for. And then we're going to solve for the remaining variable. So that is the process. Now let's see a few examples on how to actually find the missing sides. Example one and two. So step one tells us that we actually want to label everything. c is already labeled. Then six and three, well one of them is a, the other is b. It doesn't quite matter which one is a, which one is b. So let's just say six is a, three is b. Pythagorean theorem Again, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let me write it on the top. And then let's start plugging numbers in. That's the second step. a is 6, so now it becomes 6 squared. e is a 3, so now it's 3 squared. That equals 2. I currently do not know c, so I'm going to keep the c squared. The last step is to solve for the remaining variable. So I need to solve for c. Before we actually get to c, of course, we've got to find out what exactly is c squared. So we're going to add the numbers together on the left side. We have 36 plus 9 equals c squared. So 45 equals c squared. Now, in order to get rid of the square, we're going to need to take square root. That's the reverse operation of square, and that's how we get rid of the square. So now you basically have square root of 45. If you forgot how to type that into your calculator, we're going to have to press second first. And then there's the button that's x squared. When you press second, it's actually going to need the things on the top of x squared, which is the little squiggly line, which is the square root symbol. And for this year, after we get answers from our calculator, we are just going to round it to two decimal places. Uh, but next year, you are going to need to know how to simplify square root of 45, which does become a 3 square root of 5, and that is more precise. But for this year, we're just keeping the two decimal places. So c equals... 6.71, don't forget a unit, centimeter. That is example one. You can pause here and try example two. Let's have a look. It's the, basically the same idea. We got to label the size to be A and B. Uh, well, I just noticed one thing that these two triangles, there's no right angle labeled, but technically they should actually be labeled to tell you that they are right triangles. Now, the two legs are going to be two and five. They are our A and B. So let's say 2 is A and 5 is B. Let's set them up. 2 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared. Same thing. We've got to find out what the left side is to know what C squared actually equals to. So 4 plus 25 equals C squared. So 29 equals C squared. And we're going to do the same thing. We are going to take a square root to get rid of the square. So square root of 29, if you're typing your calculator, that should give you 5.3. Nine after rounding. Don't forget a unit meter. That's example two. Moving on, example three and example four. Same thing. The angle should actually be labeled. Should have been labeled. Just by looking, you should be able to tell the, which side is the longest side. So twenty-five looks like is the longest side, and that is going to be our C. As for the other two sides, let's say x is basically the a, 24 is basically the b. You can switch them around if you want to. But the Pythagorean theorem does not change. It's still a squared plus b squared. That equals to c squared. My a now is an x, so it's going to be x squared. My b is a 24, so now it's going to be a 24 squared. That equals to c, which is my 25 squared. It's a little bit different than the previous two examples because 
the number that we're looking for, we're solving for, is not on the right side by itself. We have other numbers. Well, then let's calculate out the other numbers. We do need to calculate out what is 24 squared. That is 576. And then on the right side, we have 25 squared. That is 625. In order to solve for x, we got to get rid of uh, the numbers first so that we can isolate x squared. So we're going to subtract 576 on both sides. x squared equals to 49. Afterwards, we can actually take a square root to get rid of the square. So the key is you can only take square root when square is the only thing left, is the only operation left. And then you can take square root to get rid of that. When you have a number, when you have addition sign, you can't just suddenly take, take a square root. This is almost like, well, when you're solving equation, you have to get x by itself without any other numbers or fractions or anything like that. Same idea here. So when you take a square root of 49, x would equal to 7. Don't forget a unit, 7 meters. That's example 3. Moving on, uh, you can pause here and try example 4. But it's basically the same idea. So let's say 8 is our A, x is our B, 20 is our C, because 20 is the longest side, that's got to be our C. Let's set it up. 8 squared plus x squared equals 20 squared. 64 plus x squared equals 400. you got to subtract the 64 over so that uh, x squared is by itself. So x squared equals 336. And now it's time to take the square root to get rid of the square. So x equals the square root of 336. Put in your calculator is 18.33. Don't forget a unit. Centimeter. There you go. That's example three and example four. Moving on. Distance. We could also use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between the two points in a coordinate system. So let's have a look. Example five and six. Four, nine. First, let's put the points down. Four, nine is right here. And then the next point is 9, 10. So I can actually have, well, it's asking to find the distance between these two points. But since they are in a grid coordinate system, we can actually find right triangles to, uh, to find the distance. So here's the right triangle that we can use. The two sides we found, of course, are going to be grid lines because the grid lines are not automatically this, uh, perpendicular to each other. They form 90 degree angles. Of course, you can choose to find this uh, right triangle. That works as well. So based on the right triangle that we see, uh, we can start labeling. Of course, the side that we're trying to find is going to be the C. The other two sides, doesn't matter which one is A, which one is B. Let's say this is our A and that is our B. Just by looking, you can see B is, has a length of 1. A has a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the C that we're trying to find, well, that is going to be the distance. So let's set up Pythagorean theorem. 5 squared plus 1 squared equals to c squared. So let's solve it. 25 plus 1 equals c squared. So it's 26 that equals to c squared. And then it's time to take the square root to get rid of the square. Square root of 26 is going to be, round it to two decimal places, is 5.10. OK, that's example 5. Let's do the same for example 6. The first point is 0, 1, which is right here. The second point is 10, 8, which is right here. So we are trying to find a distance between them. We do need to find the right triangle. Here's the right triangle that we can use. Or you can use one on the other side. That one works as well. Because the grid lines will form 90 degree angles to make them into a right triangle. So let's say this is our A and this is our B. Our A in this case, by counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And our B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 10 squared plus 7 squared, that equals to our hypotenuse, C squared. 100 plus 49 equals C squared. So 149 equals C squared. Time to take the square root. After uh, taking square root, C should be 12 point. Q1. So the distance between the two points, for example, 5 is 5.10, and for example, 6 is 12.21. But we're not completely done. The issue is here we have to depend on a graph to be able to find out this right triangle. What if sometimes we don't even have a graph to depend on? Then we need to know exactly how to just use the two points given to us to find the information that we need, i.e. the A and the B, so that we can actually find the C. 
The good news is when we try to find distance, we're always trying to find the hypotenuse. So a lot of times we actually use letter D instead of letter C to represent the distance. So we're not finding D, C squared, we're actually finding D squared. Just the D is the hypotenuse in the tri right triangle. Now let's look a bit closer at the points that are given to us. Here's something that we have always been calculating. Whenever you're given two points, you've been calculating slopes. And when you calculate slopes, it's typically y2 minus y1. So let's actually label everything. x1, x2, no, x1, y1, x2, y2. Let's see what's going to be when you do y2 minus y1. So y2 minus y1 is actually going to be 10 minus 9, which is a 1. And then x2 minus x1 is going to be 9 minus 4, which is a 5. Mm. Don't these numbers look a bit familiar? Because 1 is right here. And 5 is right here. So you see, you can totally just use the two coordinates to subtract each other to get our A and get our B. Um, preferably, you actually use the bigger number subtracting the smaller number because you just need a length. Uh, but to be more precise, we do want to do y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1. So let's use that to check with example 6. <laughs> let's say we have x1, y1, x2, y2. Well, y2 minus y1 is 8 minus 1, which is a 7. There you go, that's our B. And x2 minus x1 is 10 minus 0, which is a 10, and that is our A. So technically, you can just use the coordinate subtracting each other to get our A and B, then set up the Pythagorean theorem. So here's the distance formula. The distance formula is D equals x2 minus x1. See, this is basically our uh, A in both cases. And this is basically our b, y2 minus y1. And we have the a squared plus b squared. But since we need to take a square root at the very end, that's over a squared and b squared. So that is our distance formula. Now let's actually practice with distance formula. Example 7 and example 8. Let me write the distance formula on the top. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. What you need to understand is this is exactly what you just did with a graph. It just that we can't always depend on a graph. We can't. Uh, we may al not always have a graph. That's why we need to know how to calculate with just the formula, not the graph. So example seven. Since we're going to need to put them into the formula, let's start labeling the coordinates: x1, y1, x2, y2. So we have d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 is 4 minus negative 2 squared. And then y2 minus y1 is 7 minus 6, then squared. Make sure you put them inside parentheses. So d equals, we have 4, this becomes a plus 2, the plus 2, which is 6 squared, and then 7 minus 6 is still just a y squared. So we have d equals 6 squared is a 36, and then 1, so that means d equals square root of 37, which if you put in your calculator, it is 6.08. Now let me point out a bit more. Imagine you have negative 2 and 6 as a point, negative 2, 6, and then 4, 7 as another point, and you're trying to like connect them, forming a little right triangle. It is going to have these values. 4 minus negative 2 is a 6. That's actually the distance between them. And then 7 minus 6 is going to be the 1, which is this right there. So it still works. It's just without a graph. That's example 7. You can try with example 8. Hopefully you have tried. Example 8 is a little bit tricky because of all the negative numbers. So let's set it up. D equals, I still label everything, x1, y1, x2, y2 x2 minus x1 is negative 1 minus a negative 5 being squared. Then y2 minus y1 is 4 minus negative 5 and then squared. So let's see what that's going to be. Negative 1 plus 5, it's a positive 4 squared. Then we have 4 plus 5, which is a 9 squared. So d equals 16 plus 81. So d equals square root of 90. 7, if you put in your calculator, that is 9.85. Now, you don't always have to do negative 1 minus negative 5. You can totally do negative 5 minus negative 1 squared, and then the other one would be negative 5 minus 4 squared. That is totally fine. The only thing you have to be careful with is 
if you have negative numbers, you have to keep them inside parentheses before you square. So this is negative 5 plus 1, which is a negative 4 squared. Make sure you keep them inside parentheses. And this will be a negative 9 squared. Keep them inside parentheses. Otherwise, the calculation won't be right because technically they're supposed to be distance and distance needs to remain positive. So this whole thing needs to come out to be a positive 16, not a negative 16. It has to still be the same as just a 4 squared and a 9 squared. Then we have this little challenge question. It's asking to find the perimeter of the triangles. Well, when you try to find a perimeter, of course, you are going to find each side, then add them together. So go ahead and find each side and then add them together. I'll leave this one for you to try. And that is everything for this lesson. Thank you.